Manis, Susan Lewis. Hi. First flight. There it is. We're going to need the O neg and blood wise. Jail, did you not hurt? Is he all right? Jail, please help him. Get a seat collar on him. Please. Please. Go, I'll stand by. Another 6.0. That was it. Damn it. Okay. I can't see. Turn it up. It is up. All right, better control the chopper. Let's bag him and move him. Yeah, I know. The kids have started teasing her. I was hoping we could keep her ghosts in my closet. This doesn't make my job any easier. That's why you get the big bucks, Doc. Funny, Deborah. You could call in an exorcist. Funnier. This is the second piano concerto by Chopin. I'll bet all of you probably think this was written by some old geezer who looked like Dr. Seton. Hmm. Well, it wasn't. In fact, Freddie Chopin composed this when he was only 19 years old. And he'd already written a lot. He'd been playing by ear and making up tunes since he was six. At eight, he had written his first of several polonaises. And at the ripe old age of 12, he was asked to play for the Tsar of Russia. Pretty scary, huh? Even for an old timer of 12. There's no reason to admit him, but he's in no shape to travel any distance for a day or two. Certainly not to Arkansas. Well, then couldn't you keep him here until he's ready to travel and for observation or whatever? Isn't that what you do? Or until his family comes to get him? Room five. Look, we can't keep him here. This place is full. Like I said, he'll be fine. He shouldn't go to sleep for 10 or 12 hours, though, because of the concussion. By the way, he refused to let his family know where he is. Is that right? This doctor, I gotta go back Look, to work. they're gonna release him here in a few minutes. Like I said, just keep an eye on him for tonight and don't let him go to sleep. What is your name? Becker. Miss Becker has kept us waiting for over an hour. Are you saying you have an appointment with the mayor? You're taking the line that we never even had an appointment, is that it? I don't think that's gonna sit very well with the alderman's ulcers. Which alderman? Hmm? Which alderman? Spacilertori. Nice try. Miss Raider uh, Becker. Yes. I apologize for my friends. But you see, I've I've got kind of a, a problem here. What kind of problem? Kind of a, a personal problem. The bathrooms are in the lobby. And the mayor is busy. You're asking if the situation can be handled or if I can handle the situation. Both. The situation can be handled. As for my qualifications, I assume coming from you that your concern is not gender-based. You assume wrong. Don't question my willingness to execute those three men. No, not your willingness, believe me. I know all about a woman's drive and desire. It's just when it comes down to swinging a pickaxe, scoring touchdowns, arm wrestling. No offense. Yeah, none taken. Just be ready. If I get a shot, I'm gonna take it. Girls, if you wanna knock it off, stay out of it. Shut up. So. We stopped off here on the way. Tim said he had to leave something for you. I wasn't here. I was at work. Did you find anything when you came home? Uh, something he might have left for you? Like $10,000? A note. Something maybe you didn't think was important. My husband leaves me a note on the day he dies. Yeah, I could throw that in the trash. Why would I think something like that would be important? I'm looking for anything. You working for IA now, Cam? That it? You find something on Tim, maybe they'll give you your job back? All right, I'm gonna leave now. You need anything? Why would I need anything? I got $10,000 under my floorboards, which is a good thing, seeing as I lost my job two months ago because I can't think anymore. If you need some money. What I need is Tim, but he's not here anymore because he trusted you to be there for him. If it had been you in that car, he would have got to you in time. You damn well know that. He would have gotten there somehow, and he would have been there in front of that bullet, and he never, ever would have let you die. Yeah, it's true enough. Son of a bitch, you can say it just like that. 
You want something to report? This is gonna get you points, Cam. This is how I've been living for the last two months. Now, every week, somebody sends me one of these with $200 cash inside. That's what I buy food with. That's what I live on, $200 a week. Go tell that to the IA. You tell him his partner got him killed, that the department wants to dig him up just to piss on him, and his so-called friends in the forest don't even return my calls because they're so afraid this is gonna rub off on them. But somebody cared about him. Somebody cared about him enough to make sure I at least eat. Give him those. Maybe they can find him and they can bury him too. Now get the hell out of my house. Your money for the crack horse, Dad. <laughs> oh, no, dear, that's true. You know your mother and I have an understanding. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, what about you, Doug? What about your girlfriends? Uh, Does it still burn when you urinate? Okay. <laughs> oh, no, 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 he's kidding. He's kidding. Plus, that went away on its own. Oh, God. We're just so glad you're dating women now. Oh, thanks. Oh, sweetie. With Dougie, you never know. All right, well, thanks, Mom. Well? Doug, please, just let your dad get this one, all right? Yes, Judy's right. It, it's Julie. My name is Julie. Oh, honey, Judy, Julie, Jim, like it's going to matter in a month anyhow, huh? <sighs> Looks a little familiar. We get lots like that. Well, we're only interested in this one. Her name is Candace Monroe. She and her boyfriend came in, both scared out of their minds. We told them there was a 24-hour consent law, meaning they had to review all the materials for a day before an appointment could be made. It didn't go over so well. What happened? They got into a big fight. We had to ask them to leave. Do you remember the boyfriend's name? I definitely can't give you that. Look, we have a dead, pregnant 15-year-old, and the baby's father is a definite person of interest. Anything that you can do to help, would really be appreciated. I'm not allowed to give out that kind of information. It could cost me my job. We have a very strict confidentiality policy here. You have got some mail this morning. Oh, I know I saw something in here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Ah, oh, it's a postcard from Alaska. Oh, look at the size of that fish. It's a... Uh... Halibut. Oh, it's a halibut. Look, 356 pounds. How would you even catch something like that, huh? How would you like to go swimming and see something like that in the water with you? <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> so, would you like me to read it to you, hon? I'll just read it to you like I usually do, okay. It says, hey, Hannah, the mud got another one. Love and regards, Nettie Bobo. Do you have any idea what that means? Well, I'm sorry, honey, I have just got to go, but I will see you tomorrow. That's some fish. My hubby would sell his soul to hook into a fish like that.